Hey, Vlad here, devinsidey.com. Welcome to another video. In the previous video, we stumbled upon four comprehensions, and today we're gonna see exactly what they do sugar to and what gotchas they bring. Let's not waste any more time and get right to it. As always, we're in the Ubuntu Virtual Machine and we have Sublime Text open with a plugin called Terminus, which we introduced a few videos ago, which emulates the regular terminal which runs SBT, which reruns the test every time we save the file. Now, before we begin, I have to be honest with you, I have been delaying this video for quite a while. The reason being is that the full name for four comprehensions is monadic four comprehensions. So they have something to do with monads and uh, monads have been popping up lately quite a bit, especially in the videos about continuations and trampolines. Um, but uh, I wasn't really planning on explaining monads yet. Now I understand that this is YouTube and YouTube is full of uh, knowledge holes anyway, uh, but at least uh, so far I have been trying and quite frankly succeeding uh, sequences sequencing my videos a little bit uh, so I could always think a few steps ahead uh, you know what I would need to explain and so on and so on and so on however um, lately I have realized that uh, my, my choices are not as linear anymore so I have to be uh, a bit more careful with them for instance I created this whole playlist so that I could explain generics to you and implicits and we have already uh, into 20 videos or so and uh, we still have like only sets and yes we have generics uh, but then we derailed completely with the whole um, playlist inside of the playlist for continuations and trampolines and um, now I you know stumbled over the four comprehensions and I was like hmm should I explain monads completely and you know have like another 10 videos about them so what I decided to do was to uh, explain four comprehensions to you uh, without going into monads at all uh, one day we will talk about monads obviously but today we're just gonna um, look at it from a from a different angle and uh, let's see how far we can get having said that all you need to understand for this video is that there's a thing called a functor and for the purposes of this video a functor is just something that has the map method with a was an appropriate signature and a monad is a functor that also has the flat map function now i butchered the definitions on purpose as i already said one day we're going to talk about monads completely and we're going to go through all the uh, laws and bells and whistles that that are connected to them the last thing that i'm going to warn you about is that i am not a big fan of four comprehensions and the reason for that is that uh the way they desugar uh seems very straightforward at the first glance but it does have quite a few gotchas and we will go through all of them over here and uh for some for some reason i have a feeling that this video is going to get kind of long and so I'm, I might split it into two. Um, all right, so uh, before we start, um, there's this compiler flag that will will show us uh, what what four comprehensions are being desugared to. And um, the problem with this with this flag is that it will it will show you basically everything that it compiles what it desugars to. So uh, in order to have a bit more control over this, uh, we're not going to go into our homegrown collections project and uh, create this new main in there where we're going to play with four comprehensions. What we're going to do instead is we're going to create a completely separate project which will have this tiny main and it will depend on homegrown collections and we will use this flag over there and we will see uh, what what the four comprehensions actually do sugar to uh, even though in the very very beginning I'm going to explain them um, manually but then eventually we're going to start using the, using this flag and the reason that we still have the dependency on the homegrown collections is that because I want to show you that uh, the sets that we spent quite a few videos building uh, also can be used with uh, four comprehensions okay so what we'll do is I'm going to right click on our sets and I'm going to open the containing folder so uh, I'm going to go into homegrown collections now I actually gotta go into dev and I'm just gonna copy the entire folder. I'm gonna copy it and whoops, what happened? Copy and paste. There we go. And I'm gonna call it for comprehensions. For hyphen comprehensions. Comprehensions. Okay, so now I'm gonna go inside. I'm gonna remove uh, all the all the things that we don't need. We don't need the license, for example. We don't need the the readme uh, because we're not gonna commit uh, commit this whole thing. Um, we don't need the target. Uh, what do we have in the resources? Just a thumbnail, we don't need the resources. Uh, project, what do we have here? Yeah, we can remove target. Uh, build properties, plugins, that's fine. Uh, source, uh, we're not gonna write tests. Uh, let's go into main, Scala. All right, we're gonna uh, remove this entire folder. All right, so now I'm gonna close that. And what Sublime allows me to do is I can go into a uh, project over here and I can say uh, add folder to project. And then we will not hold, have only homegrown collections, we will also have the uh, four comprehensions, which are over here, right? So it just opens them um, like this. Okay, so um, over here, by the way, this is the um, the terminal for the, um, for, the for, uh, for the homegrown collections. Uh, we're gonna exit SPT, uh, switch to the for comprehensions and eventually we're going to start SPT. I didn't press enter yet. All right, so um, 
let's see what we need to change uh, first of all let's go into project into plugins spt uh, what i need the coverage um that's fine uh get ignore we can also remove get ignore we don't need it uh some rendering issues hold up there we go all right so we got okay so over here we will create a file in just a second actually we can do it now let's call it for comprehensions that's gala and let's create an object uh, for comprehensions extends app print out we got my favorite hyphens hyphen u to 5000 times 50 we got hello world and we got the hyphens again uh, we're gonna see it in just a bit all right let's go into build spt okay so uh, let's leave that leave that that that's fine that's fine okay we don't need this alias uh well i'm gonna have a bunch of options today in fact we can remove all of these uh we will we will add um the uh, the the flag that i that i was mentioning but we will disable it in the beginning so this is the flag Xprint parser uh, but as I said we're gonna disable it in the beginning okay uh, library dependencies okay we don't need continuations we don't need Scala tasks we don't need any of that um, auto compiler plugins I'm gonna leave this one because we we'll, later we're also gonna use a one compiler plugin so I'm just gonna leave it like that okay I think this is this is all we need and unless I made some some mistakes somewhere um, I believe that, that this should be fine. The the last thing that uh, you actually kind of get to learn today, uh, we're gonna do something like a, like a multi-build. So uh, by default, uh, when when you don't include the name of your project, uh, what SPT will do is it will have a lazy val, and it will call it somehow, called prehensions. I wanna call it like this with a hyphen, that's why I'm using the back ticks. So uh, by default, uh, this is what uh, SPT is actually generated. It says, okay, this is a project in the current folder. Right, so uh, if you don't change anything over here, this is this is what's happening anyway. So what we can also go here now and say depends on, right, and we can say root project, which is just a factory for something, file, and now we can just give it the path, home vlad dev homegrown collections like this so now this project has a dependency on on the collections in fact um it will even uh, understand you know it's a source code dependency so if you change something in the homegrown collections uh, uh, project then it will uh, it will recompile recompile ours okay so i believe uh, right now we can go into spt all right everything looks fine let's do clean let's do run okay so it ran something but it did not run what i wanted what did i do wrong oh i wanted that to be a string man like that all right now we have these hyphens and now I can actually copy that hyphen and just put it over here and uh, it's gonna it's gonna look the same all right so uh, before we begin let's let's test the dependency so if we import uh, homegrown collections like this then we should be able to do some like set one two three oops one two three what is happening <laughs> one two three and let's print it out and uh, remember our two strings for for our sets uh looks different than the one from the collections library so um you know from the standard collections library so it looks like this and we, we can actually see that we're using our set so if i, re I remove that then uh, we're going to be using the one from the from the standard library and this is actually how, how we will begin and the last thing that i'm going to demonstrate is that if we're using actually our sets and we're going to go into into sets and i'm going to add a semicolon for, for example over here then it will it will still understand that there's a change so it will recompile everything uh, it understands the dependencies all right i'm going to close this close that uh, i'm also going to collapse this and uh, you know in fact in fact i'm going to collapse this whole this whole bar on the left we don't really need it okay so uh, we're going to keep the build uh, because we're going to be jumping in there uh, from time to time and we have the four comprehensions over here and that is all that we need all right, so uh, let's begin. Before we begin, we we need a few helpers uh, because I'm gonna I'm gonna try to distinguish with the colors uh, if we're using uh, you know um, the monadic methods ourselves or if we're using the the four comprehension. So uh, I'm just gonna have a few helpers. I'm gonna have a method called magenta that is gonna um, take any input and just print out stuff in magenta, right? So it's just gonna take console dot magenta plus the input plus console dot reset. And I'm going to do the same thing with yellow. So yellow is going to be for uh, four comprehensions. I'm going to maybe leave a comment here for comprehensions. And magenta is going to be um, 
manual transformations like this and let's not forget to switch this to yellow okay uh, let's just for fun uh, use magenta over here I have no idea what it is compiling right now forever no idea what just happened but it took like 10 seconds to compile all right so magenta is working and the yellow one should be working as well all right uh, sometimes you just don't know what SPT is doing okay so let's switch it back to the regular regular printlet okay so um, we're gonna be dealing with a simple data structure today um, which is um, actually I can do CC and then press tab and sublime will generate a final case class for me which is awesome so we're gonna have a book uh, with a name with an author author which is a string and maybe it has a bunch of other contributors um, secondary authors uh, authors and so on and so on and so on we're gonna start with lists but later we're gonna switch to sets um, actually let me let me remove that because I don't want to I don't want that okay and it will have a tiny lazy file in there with all contributors all contributors which is a list of strings right and all it will do is it will prepend the author to the contributors okay so um, now what we're going to do is we're going to have um, a books which is going to be a list of book and we're just going to create a few books now i'm going to copy paste them because i don't want to waste your time so uh, i'm just going to paste them over here like this all right so we have just basically three books let me have a bit more space over here uh the first book uh it's called name one author is author one it doesn't have any contributors uh then we have another book which is name two author two contributor one and then we have the third one name three uh author three uh but we have the same contributor as as the one who wrote this book and also author two is the contributor for um for, for this book uh, but he, he he was the author for the for the, for the second book and we're going to have an example uh, where, where this is going to matter um, a bit later all right so uh the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to print it out okay what's happening it doesn't like oh yeah oh sorry as I said, like later we're gonna switch to set. So in my script it was already a set. So okay, so we have this set, and um, in the beginning we're just gonna start um, playing around. So we're gonna have a magenta of books, so that we so that we see them, All right? So that's how it looks like. It's a list of books, blah 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 blah. But as you can see, it's it's kind of ugly. So um, I'm gonna be commenting out uh, basically every every example that I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you, and then I'm gonna comment it out. So um, what we wanna have is books for each magenta right so this is this is our books this is how they're rendered and we already know that uh, this is just syntactic sugar for this right and this is just syntactic sugar for this when well, the parameter is just going to be injected like this let me scroll down a little bit so uh, as long as we're getting the same results uh, we know that I'm right okay and this is just syntactic sugar for book book comes in magenta gets called was the book right and we also know that we can write the same code with curly braces and notice that uh, scholarly form understands that curly braces are sort of like a like a control structure so it um, it formats them a little bit differently and because it formats them a little bit differently uh, it's 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 rather typical to uh, to do it like this to write it like that there we go like this okay now let's have an example uh, like this where we go a bit further so um, like this so let's say that we did not want to see books we actually wanted to see the contributors so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the book now and by the way I prefer actually to uh, to have the dot for each over here right and maybe maybe it's gonna be a bit more clear uh, why why I'm doing this a bit later uh, hold up like this okay so uh, now I want to have another for each right so uh, I'm, I'm gonna call this for each uh, not on the book but on the contributors right so I'm gonna have contributors like this so now I have a contributor over here right and now I can just uh, print out or actually we're using magenta I can just uh, magenta C and um, what am I calling C I'm gonna call it contributor contributor there we go like this and I'm gonna do that also in magenta magenta like this okay so now we see the contributors contributor one hyphen magenta hyphens contributor one 
uh, happens, author, author to Magenta happens. Now, this should be obvious by now, um, but uh, notice that um, this one, it didn't have any uh, any contributors, right? The first book. So we, didn't, we don't see any print lines. So uh, this line is coming from here and these two lines are coming from, from this list, okay? So what four comprehensions allow you to do is to replace um, this uh, callback hell, so to say. So if I comment this out, what we can do is we can write a four with book and now we have this arrow kind of thing, which is, uh, you know, I have, I, I'm using fewer code, which is why we see the arrows like this. But basically it's less than, uh, uh, less than a symbol and then a minus like this, right? So if we just take the book out of the books and we're going to do yellow now because we're using a full comprehension, yellow book. Right? So uh, this is exactly the same code as we had over here. And uh, the next one is going to be, I'm going to duplicate that. Uh, it's going to be like this. And now it's starting to look like a, like a for loop in, in, in any other language. Obviously, it's still doing exactly the same thing. Um, now I'm going to copy that again, comment that. Uh, by the way, I'm doing this whole commenting out because later, as I said, we're going to use this flag and I wanted to desugar only the stuff that it actually has to compile and the compilers usually ignore comments, right? Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to see that a full comprehension can actually uh, do nested calls, right? So we can do the same thing as we did over here with books and um, uh, books for each and contributors for each. So we can have a semicolon over here and we can say contributor, get it, get it out of the book dot contributors, right? And now over here, we can have, uh, by the way, I forgot to say that we can also have obviously uh, the, the curly braces. So uh, now we're going to have the yellow book and we're also going to have the hyphens, the yellow hyphens, right? So we can compare it with, with the magenta hyphens and they look exactly the same. Uh, oops, I forgot to do the contributor over here, contributor. There we go. Okay, so now the, the magenta lines and um, in fact, you know what? We probably should do this instead. Uh, obviously did not do it the way I wanted. Hold on. I want to have the build over here. I want the full comprehensions over here. All right, and there we go. So uh, now as you can see, the magenta lines are the same as the as the yellow ones. Now the line is getting kind of kind of longer. So uh, what we also can do is we can um, do that instead. So we can press enter over here, we can press enter over here and over here as well. And if we do that, obviously it's gonna produce the same the same thing. If we do that, coming out, basically again, uh, we can also replace these braces with curly braces. And we're doing that because if we do that, then we can also get rid of this semicolon, right? So these are these are four comprehensions in action. So uh, the next thing that, that we're gonna do is that if we, um, let me comment this out comment that out as well. I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to copy it out. So if I paste it over here, right, let's see it print, being printed out again. So um, remember this um, example was it was a chessboard the first time that we that we saw flat map and we have the structure always like flat map and then map and flat map and then map. This is a very, very um, um, common structure. So what we can do is we're going to replace this for each with a flat map and we can replace this one with a map. It seems to, to do the same way, but it also turns out that, that it also it produces a result. And before I'm going to show you this, uh, I'm going to actually, um, actually, why, why not? I'm going to show you this right, right away. So we're going to have books over here, uh, or no, it's actually not books. It's, it's contributors, which is a list of strings equals whatever com comes back from, from, from the thing, right? So what we also can do is we can go over here and we say contributors dot for each. And as I just said, I prefer to have it over here for each contrib basically basically that line is going over there like this and now over here all I need to do is I need to return the contributor right so uh, what is happening contributor 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 uh, what does it say not found value contributor really here this one this one is contributors okay so over here we're producing the value and over here we are, we're actually going going with was was for each again now it turns out that because this is a, a very common pattern, we can use the same for comprehension as before to do something similar. So I'm gonna do that. Uh, I'm gonna leave these two. I'm gonna paste that in. 
I'm going to do that. So what we want to have is the same thing as over here. So I'm going to duplicate this line. I'm going to bring it down. And we're going to say, okay, I want this for comprehension to generate the same the same thing. Now um, this is not enough. Like this code is not enough to uh, to let the for comprehension uh, know that it should uh, generate the flat map and map calls instead of the for each calls. So instead, what we need is an extra keyword. We need to tell it uh, yield whatever comes back over here. So the same as before, we're going to use the contributor over here. And at the bottom, we can do that. Same as same as before. Uh, now I'm gonna comment this out. I'm gonna remove that. And because we're using comprehensions, okay, this one is actually does not does not uh, use does not use the full comprehension yet. Uh, so let's do it in magenta first, and then rewrite that one as well. So we can have yet another for loop. Right. So this this one is gonna be simple. I'm just gonna go contributor, get it out of contributors and over here do the same thing as over there instead do them make them yellow let's remove that all right so now it's exactly the same code as before but written with four comprehensions now obviously you can also combine them uh, i'm going to come in this one and we're going to do uh, this one first uh, so i'm going to go over here i'm going to comment that in so uh, we don't want to produce the value first. I mean, we do want to produce the value, but we don't want to store it in the val. So we're just going to remove the val, and we're just going to remove that contributors, right? And now you might see why I like to um, to to write them like this in the second line, because now I can just collapse that, for example, and I see okay, there's some flat map happening, and there's some for each happening. This is exactly why why I do that. Now, if you do that with with the for comprehension, uh, then um, we actually can do both now. Hold up. Um, let me paste that in. Let's do that. Okay, so uh, what we need to do now is we want to remove that and we want to have braces around this thing. Right? By the way, we don't need them over here. Like that. Right? So yield the contributor. Okay, and um, after we're done, we're, we're done with this for comprehension. We can just take that and put it over here. Now I know that the code is jumping around a bit. I'm just going to compile this. Glider form is going to fix everything for me. Um, What's happening? 128. This is the full comprehension. This is the curly brace. Oh yeah, I forgot another four. Mm, okay, so uh, we need a four contributor. Hold up, that's going to get ugly for a contributor that is going to come out of this thing over here, right? Uh, let's see. Maybe it doesn't like that brace over here. Oh, no, there's, there should be one more. Yeah, there we go, like this. It's kind of ugly. I mean, Jesus. All right. Um, Basically, you know what? I'm gonna revert this one. I really don't. I really don't like it. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna sort of mix and match them a bit differently. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to to that. Yeah, where we just had had this and this second part. I'm just gonna use the regular for each like this without the dot. I think that's I think that's a little bit better. All right. And I'm gonna, uh, this is technically a, a regular for each, uh, but I'm gonna make this yellow so that it doesn't look like, like that one. Okay, so now we see that, that it actually generates the same thing. Now we're coming to the point where I'm gonna show you uh, why I don't like four comprehensions that much. Uh, first of all, obviously we've just seen um, the code that was kind of ugly, and even this one is, is not that much better. Now, um, here's the thing though, um, check it out. You might be tempted to rewrite this um, like this. Hold up. You might be tempted to take this, I'm gonna comment it out, and say, okay, what's the point of yielding the contributor if all I want to do is um, I just want to print print that stuff out? Okay, so uh, you might be tempted to do that like this. Okay, and we don't need that because the contributor is already in scope. And it looks like, hold up, this one, this one, yeah. Okay, now it looks like uh, it's doing exactly the same thing as as our our four. Um, um, as our not, not as our for as our regular uh, transformations is doing, but but um, but it doesn't. Uh, what it, what it does is it does that. It goes over here and says okay for each, and it just puts that one over there. 
Now, the difference is not that, um, I'm sorry, it also does that. Now, the difference is not that, what is happening? Magenta, mm -hmm, this one, uh, for each, there's one more missing. There we go. All right, so uh, the difference is not that all of a sudden flat map and map is gone and now we're using for each because the result looks looks the same. And the reason is that that uh, you lose something something way more important and it's very, very subtle. And this is exactly why I don't, is this is exactly why I don't like four comprehensions because the, their issues are super, super subtle. Uh, even the most experienced developers uh, have to look at them twice sometimes to be sure. Now, this thing that I'm talking about uh, goes by the name of structural preservation. So uh, let, me, let me show this to you. If I change that list over here to a set right not even our set the one from the from the collections library then the results still look the same however if i go back to what we had before which is this one flat map map over here we have the contributor and i'm gonna go back over here to for each for each, uh, what were we doing? Just magenta? No, not, not magenta. What we're doing, we're doing like partly that, like this. This goes away over here, and this goes away over here. All right? Uh, do, 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 this one probably. No, what's happening? I did not want to put that for each over here. Hold on, I wanted to put it over here. There we go. All right. Notice that the result is different now. I'm telling you, like, uh, not even beginners, like even experienced developers, they might look at this and they might not see that it's not the same as this. Okay. So um, structural preservation uh, works in such a way that if you call a uh, flat map or map on, on a monad, okay, I said it, uh, then whatever comes out of it is still going to be a set. It might be a set of something else, but it's still going to be a set especially in the func functional languages uh, where there is no um, there's no subtyping right so it's not going to be some subclass of set it's going to be the set now because it's going to remain the set it's going to it's going to maintain all the properties of the set namely that there will be no duplicates so one of the contributors uh, goes away this one okay there is a reason why why I constructed this example in in, in such a way and um, also don't confuse this with persistent data structures because uh, persistent da data structures is a property of the data structure where uh, where, where uh, parts of the data structure are being shared with another one for example if you have a list of two and three and then you prepend a one and you get the list of one two three the list was just the two and three it was there before and it's still there after the the fact that you prepended something so now you have now you have two lists and you did it in such a way that you shared the immutable data between them without copying stuff around uh, this is this is um, so one one is a uh, one is a structural preservation the one where, where just the properties are are maintained and the other one is the persistent data structures where uh, the entire data structure is shared not only the properties by the way if you happen to be writing a database driver and uh, you're thinking about uh, writing your methods in such a way that they will return uh, lists of data or some sort of sequences of data instead of sets of data uh, for some performance reason, it's fine. We're still friends, but please also overload them or create another alternative The one was, was the one that, that gives me sats back, right? Because this is exactly the property that I want to have here, which is also the reason why I spent like 20 videos on explaining sets to people uh, even before I explained um, arrays, which is done in most programming languages. The other reason why I prefer the manual uh, flat map and uh, map transformations to full comprehension is because uh, I don't have to rely on the mercy of the compiler and uh, to be sure what exactly it it, desug it, uh, it desugars uh, the full comprehensions to. Uh, now I can look at this and see, oh, uh, this is actually kind of silly because this is just an identity function over here. So we're just mapping the, to the contributor, but we're not doing anything with it. So I can start simplifying by just typing identity over here. And then I keep going like this. I'm saying, okay, so I have contributors and I'm mapping them to identity, but mapping to identity doesn't, doesn't do anything. So I can just remove that as well. Now I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna start joining lines by pressing control J. And I'm gonna see that this is only var a variable that I'm using only once. So I can use an underscore. I can remove those curly braces, use the regular braces. Right, so remember in the beginning I said that I can collapse the flat map. Now there is nothing left to collapse. Okay, let's see. Still doing the same thing. And now, you know, if I wanted to go even further, I can create a method called, called show that would take in the contributor, which is just a string, return me a unit, and just do, do that thing for me. That. Okay, so now I can just do it for each. 
show. Right now, this is obviously an overkill, but basically, you know, if you write write some stuff manually, it actually adds, uh, it actually also adds some clarity. So uh, there is always a trade-off. Uh, now, it might sound like I really, really hate for comprehensions. That's not the case. They they do have a purpose, and I'm going to show you in, in just a second where they actually shine. Uh, but just always remember that they have a cost. All right. So uh, let me comment this out. And uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to do the example from the uh, programming in Scala book. Um, where's the yellow one? Oh, uh, yellow one was here. Okay, so uh, this example is uh, from the programming in Scala book written by Martin Odersi himself. And the example goes like this. Uh, let's find the uh, author authors that have written at least two books. And the idea is that we're basically going to cross-reference books uh, twice. So we're going to have books flat map, and then we're going to have books again, and then we'll flat map again. So uh, we're going we're gonna to write it manually first. And uh, you're going to see that it's a bit tedious to write. So we're going to start with books dot flat map. So this is the first book, okay? So we're gonna be inside of that flat map. Now we're gonna take books again, and uh, we're gonna filter. Uh, so we're gonna make sure that the book that we're getting again is not the same book as we as we already have, right? So we're gonna cross them, uh, but we wanna assure that, that, uh, that at no point in time we're talking about exactly the same book, okay? So we have that, that filter, and I'm actually gonna um, have another flat map like this. Right, so uh, this is this, the the second time that we're we're talking about books. So we have the B one and we have the B two. So now we're gonna have do something inside of this of this flat map. So we're gonna take the contributors from from the B one. We're gonna have all contributors. Okay, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna flat map that. Right, so we're gonna have the contributor one in our hand. Okay, like this, and now we're gonna do the same thing with B two B two all contributors. And uh, all we need to do here is we need to filter the one that is also the first one right so um i'm going to disregard this a little bit so that it's more uh clear this one and this one as well oh that's a b2 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 there we go okay so uh now that we have that all we need to do is we need to print it out uh we print it out in magenta like this. Uh, notice that again, this is because we're using the sets. If we were not using the sets, if we were using lists over here, then we would have duplicates, right? Like this. Let's let's go back to the sets and go down. Okay, so uh, this is not straightforward. Maybe it's straightforward to read. It was obviously not straightforward to write. And what four comprehensions allow you to do is to write that to write that um, uh, more more straightforward. Okay. So what we're going to do over here is we're going to have a full comprehension, okay? And I'm going to say, okay, so we need the books like this, books. We need the books again. We can put a filter on them. And uh, we're also going to go get the contributors from B1. And we're going to get the contributors from B2. And we're only going to take them if C2 equals C1, and then we're going to yield C2, and I'm going to have curly braces around this, like that, okay? And we're going to say for each yellow. There we go. Exactly the same result. Again, really, really careful. Notice the difference. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to comment it out. Put it over here. So if instead of yielding C2, we're just gonna we're just gonna do yellow C2. That's what kind of happened, right? So we we kind of lost uh, we we lost our our structural preservation. Yeah, we lost the preservation. <laughs> yeah, we didn't preserve the structure. Okay, so. Um, yeah, let me just let me just throw this one out and re-enable re -enable this one. Um, I'm gonna move this one up. I'm not really sure if, if I'm gonna commit this. I, I actually didn't plan on committing committing this. All right, there we go. Now I didn't really explain this properly, um, but as you can see, we can also use filters in in for comprehension, and this is something that we need to um, to take a closer look at. So this is the first time uh, where we're actually gonna use our compiler plugin. So uh, what we'll do is I'm gonna comment this out, and I'm gonna comment that out. And we're going to start with a uh, very simple full comprehension. Uh, so we're just going to take the books and we're just going to print them out, print them out like this. Okay. So uh, now I'm going to go to our build file and I'm going to enable this flag 
now I need to press enter here I need to reload the project and I need to run again so what it will do is it will not only print out uh, what um, you know print out the results it will also tell me what are the sugars to so we have this val books over here which is at the very very top right so there's our val books and uh, right after it everything is coming out so the next thing that is coming is is this one so uh, over here you don't see this you see this for each right this is the simple example so uh, now I'm not gonna comment uh, comment it out I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep improving it so um, as you can see if I put a yield in here and then it will just switch uh, this for each to a map over here right and uh, then if I also do C uh, B dot contributors and I oh by the way I was printing out B uh, I didn't want to I didn't want to do that hold on let me comment this out uh, let me yield the B like this okay so it, it's it's mapping uh, map into identity okay so uh, if I do the same thing with a C then it should be flat map map okay so we have a flat map and we have a map to identity and again I cannot stress this enough this very very simple code has this extra map uh, for no freaking reason right because um, this is this should be the same code flat map contributors right so this 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 will produce the same thing right so if I go over here and I say um, for each print line see by the way another another thing I forgot the curly braces so now it it, it prints out every character from the string there we go okay so this is is the same code right but it has this extra extra map map to identity for, for for no reason all right okay so let's remove this one and I'm gonna stop complaining so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna have this filter over here so let's say for example if uh, b.name starts starts with an a right all the books are called name one name two and name three and so on and so on and so on okay so now what we see is that it generated actually books dot uh, with filter um, b name starts with an a flat map and so on and so on and so on so uh, basically what, what we see is that it doesn't generate filter it generates with filter uh, let's let's find our example over here this one and let's mimic what what it has been doing so let's do that okay so let's try to do a with filter over here all right let's try to do a whisk filter over here and this one doesn't work because this flat map uh, wants something that uh, that it can um, that it can map over basically so uh, what we're forced to do is we're forced to do map identity over here identity right which is exactly the same thing as um, as the compiler would generate for us so this is actually what it what it would generate uh, with filter with filter and identity by the way I forgot to show you that if you go to the regular terminal if you have Scala C installed so if you do just Scala C and pass in hyphen X show phases then uh, we will see um, all the phases that the compiler goes through and the first one is the parser and this is the one that uh, oops I'm sorry oh, what did I just click there the first one is the parser this is the one that, that we're using so we're passing the source into ASTs and perform sim simple desugaring so this is the one that, that we're using right now okay so uh, just to be sure let's compare uh, our for loop which is uh, which one um, this one this one let's take this for loop and let's compare what it what it generated yeah it looks pretty much the same thing this one and this one they, they look exactly the same you can pause the video and compare them it, it should be exactly the same now uh, why does it call with filter and not filter so uh, I'm gonna explain this in just a few minutes uh, for now what we're gonna do is what I'm um, we, we're gonna switch to using our sets because our sets don't have with filter so we're gonna add it just so that for comprehensions will, will work so um, first of all I'm gonna um, I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna do that so we're not doing the filter stuff and I'm gonna do the same thing over here I'm gonna do the same thing over here right so uh, now the results uh, should be different obviously but okay I can't I still have to what's what's happening one error uh, closing brace okay oh this one like that 
Let me scroll down. All right. I also need to to turn this flag off because otherwise it's just going to produce a lot of output. Okay. Reload and let's run again. Okay. So uh, what I want to do is I want to switch to using our sets. But if I do that, even though I removed uh, the WUS filter stuff, it still doesn't compile because it says that it required a foldable but I found it found a list. Uh, the problem is that in our um, uh, foldable factory where flat map is defined, uh, it wants a function that produces a foldable and the foldable is something from our library and we're using lists over there and um, the, the lists in the standard library know nothing about the foldables. So in order to fix that we're going to go over here and we're going to say that this book is not using uh, lists it's, it's using sets for contributors as well so we're just going to do set over here and the way we add sets is by saying contributors and author there we go okay so uh, this should work with um you know with with the other sets as well obviously oh yeah so not not complaints because um in in the set in the standard library there's no method add there's just plus like this Okay, so let's switch. Let's switch to ours where we have add over here like this. Let's go down. Okay, this is where we were. Now we don't have whisk filter, but we do have filter. So the first thing that we do is we will just um, uh, duplicate the signature filter and we replace it with whisk filter and we just call filter with the same predicate, right? So now we'll do exactly the same thing. We can also make it a file def like this. Okay, and uh, now all of a sudden we can use this thing. Whoops, not what I wanted. Was filter. Was filter. Map identity. In fact, I believe we actually don't need uh, map identity for for um, for ours. Uh, let's enable that. Let's enable that, and now everything should work. What is the point of was filter? And to understand that, I'm gonna go enable that flag again. So that we can we can see what is being generated. Let me comment uh, comment this out real quick. Okay, so uh, I need to reload, reload, and run again. Okay, so notice that every time it calls whisk filter, uh, there is a and there is a uh, flat map behind it, and after this um, whisk filter, there is there is a map behind behind it. So um, what I'm going to show you is basically that um, maybe, maybe we should have a, a simpler example. Hold up. Let's do something simpler. Um, let's comment this out and let's have an example where we just have a full comprehension with a number over here and we just have a set of one to three and over here actually you can you can have in this this if guard over here uh, but I prefer to write it over here. So and we're going to say if n um, zero like this. So basically, if it's an even number, then yield n and over here for each yellow. Okay. All right. So uh, the two is is the only even number. But uh, if we scroll up, now hold up. I want to see what it what it what it gave me. Hold up. What? I I named the flag right? Yes, I did. Okay, so what's happening? Clean, run. All right, there we go. Okay, so notice that it generates the WIS filter, and after that, it has dot map identity. All right, so it always has this map identity. Now, because they are being sugars in such a way, because the what the compiler is synthesizing is always this call to map or flat map every time after with filter um with filter exists as an op as an optimization right so you have the regular filter but um you you're never going to use it in full comprehension so you're going to use with filter in full comprehensions uh the other way around you're also never going to use with filter uh, outside of full comprehension because you have filter now what is so special about with filter uh the idea behind with filter is that it will not produce another set it will produce a wrapper around the already existing set together with that with a predicate and then it will um, have also a flat map map and for each uh, but every time it runs them uh, it will also make sure that the element passes the predicate and this is what we're going to do now it's right teeny tiny wrapper uh, that we're going to return from with filter and also notice that full comprehensions will still work so full comprehensions work um, for an interface uh, with uh, sort of say structural typing 
right? So the signature has to only roughly match uh, what, what the full comprehension needs and it will still work, okay? So uh, what we're gonna have here is, instead of returning the subtype of uh, foldable factory, and by the way, maybe we should switch it again um, to, I wanna have this one at the bottom like this, okay? So now, now, now we see more. So instead of returning this, and by the way, let's, let's also re remove the flag again because it's just producing a lot of output reload and run over here okay so uh let's see the idea is that we're going to rewrite that stuff and we should still see the two at the end okay so instead of this we're going to return the foldable factory dot wrapper with this element and with this subtype of foldable factory right so th this wrapper what it will do is we're going to write it in just a second uh right so we're just going to do a new foldable factory dot wrapper and it will just wrap this and this predicate that is that is being given over here right so what we'll do is we're going to have this foldable factory and we're going to create a companion object over here right and we're just going to have a final class wrapper now it will have have quite a few generics over here but um in the end it will just take the foldable factory which is a foldable factory oh we can actually copy it from over here uh over here this one yeah there we go like that and it will take the predicate right and the predicate is just a function that takes an element and produces a boolean now um, because we need the element and subtype of foldable factory we need to introduce them over here and it turns out that all we need to do is we need to copy that entire thing copy that entire thing put it over here okay so now we have the element and we have the subtype of the um, foldable factory so now all we need to do is we need to take all of these ma methods like map and flat map and um, uh, we need to also take for each and for each is in foldable foldable over here oh it's final uh, let's not make it final so let's copy that go over here so we're gonna have for each map and flat map okay and these are all final so the whole idea is that instead of just just calling this function that is being passed to for each for example uh first is we'll check if the current is passing the predicate right so it's just gonna do that do that okay right and uh, let, let's actually see if it compiles i didn't try to compile okay it doesn't compile okay okay so uh the other thing that we need to do everywhere is basically every time we call fold for example uh, we actually need to call fold on the foldable factory so if we go here 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 like that okay uh, the same thing every time we call factory.empty it's actually foldable factory.factory.empty let's see we should have already less errors <laughs> we actually don't have less errors not found value foldable factory did i call it wrong foldable factory over here Oh, I forgot the curly braces. Jesus. Okay. There, this is a class. Okay. All right. Not not only not only it compiles, it actually it actually does something. Okay. So as you can see, uh, we we haven't um, we haven't touched map and flat map yet. This is why we're seeing one, two, three. We should see, we should see only um, only two, right? So uh, we need to de sugar that one a little bit. So instead of uh, how, how should I do this? Let me let me do that so that you can see both. Okay, so remember the video is about fold. We're gonna have ACC and we're gonna have current, All right? And then we're gonna say if predicate current only then do ACC dot add function current. Otherwise, just leave the ACC alone. Okay, let's see that one. Uh, I believe in our case, yeah, in our case, we're actually using maps, so now it's actually doing what it's supposed to do. Um, but still, since we're already here, let's uh, let's fix this one as well. We can actually copy that one. Um, we can duplicate it like this. Predicate, then that. Otherwise, just leave the ACC alone like that. Okay, and that's that's all there is. So this, uh, this whole wrapper is from here to here like this it's only 27 lines long so uh we're just going to return in fact i'm going to commit that, that, that part 
right? Because this is, you know, this is a contribution to the homegrown collections library, right? So this is an optimization uh, that does not create um, an intermediate data structure, it just creates a teeny tiny wrapper where it puts that thing in and the predicate. And every time you call for each map and flat map, it intercepts them with this predicate. All right, we're almost done with the video. Let's go back to our four comprehensions and I'm gonna show you a few more things. So um, one thing that you need to know is that as soon as you have pattern matching over here, you can have pattern matching over there, then um, what the four comprehension will generate is gonna be a little bit surprising. And in, in fact, what it's gonna do is it's not gonna generate the call to map. It's gonna generate a call to collect. Uh, I mean, it will also desugar collect and it will desugar partial functions. Um, but yeah, it's gonna generate collect and collect is basically a filter and then a map. So uh, all you were doing over here was, was pattern matching, but uh, all of a sudden you got a filter as well. So in order to demonstrate that, uh, I'm gonna switch that to, maybe I should comment this out first. I'm gonna copy that, comment it out, go down over here like this. So uh, let's pattern match on this. Let's say that this was a sum n. In fact, let's run it like this. Let's see what happens. Okay, I can have this one. Okay, it doesn't like me. Found some of a required int. Yeah, okay, so this one this one already doesn't compile because the compiler knows that this is this is a set of integers. However, if that was a, a set of um, none and a sum one, sum two, and a sum three. Yeah, then it should be fine. So we have we have the one three two, and notice that it just kicked kicked this one out, right? So it, so it filtered it. It didn't warn that hey, by the way, you're you know, uh, I'm gonna throw out some stuff. Uh, what what it did was it it converted that um, um, that map to collect, right? So 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 what it did behind the scenes was it took this, right? And maybe we should switch back to that. I actually kind of liked it. Okay, so it it took that, right? And instead of going to map, because if it did map and did that, if it did that, then it would actually uh, produce a warning, right? Let's say it would fail on the follow input none, and it will throw an exception. But what it did was it generated the call to collect. What's happening? What, what happened to this? Hello? Oh yeah, I know what went wrong. Um, our sets don't have the collect function yet, uh, so let's let's switch to the regular sets. Okay, and now we have the problem with the add. It's plus. All right. Okay. So uh, as you can see, uh, this is what what it disagreed to. You can also use the flag to see what exactly it disagreed to, uh, because. Um, Actually, well, what the hell? I'm just I'm I'm just gonna write it down for you. Uh, so uh, instead of this, I'm gonna comment this out. Um, because our sets don't have collect, but this still worked with our sets, right? So it 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 obviously disagreed it into something that uh, that works without collect. So uh, obviously it, it disagreed it to with filter, with filter, and then it did case sum true otherwise false, and then what it did was it said map, and then it took the sum n. Right, and then it suppressed the warning, and then it matched on case sum, and and like this for each magenta. Right, so this is this is what it generated, and this one would actually still work with with ours. Right, so if you go here, go add. Right, because ours now have with filter and they have map and they have for each. This is exactly what it generated, and you can see it for yourself with a flag. Also, it's a very common example um, for um, for this uh, for this problem. That again, even even um, even senior developers um, sometimes fall into this trap. Is the following? This is a very popular example. So if you destructure something into a tuple, it doesn't have to be a tuple, just a tuple like in this in this scenario. And you have a set or a list, and you have your tuples over here, right? And then all of a sudden you made a mistake and you put a five over here. Then this is not a tuple. Then all of a sudden this is not going to be a set of a tuple of int int. All of a sudden it's going to be a set of any. And then this pattern match is not going to work. Uh, but you're not going to see any warnings and you're not going to see any exception. Let's uh, yield a, um, um, I don't know, a B2, B2A. 
for some reason doesn't really matter uh, let's have that over here that over here for each yellow like this right so we'll just kick out the kick out the five right so another moral of the story is to specify your types right so if you tell it hey uh, i actually think that there should be a tuple of int int then we'll just not compile because you're putting a five over there right so and then you remove the five and everything will fine will be fine so the moral of the story is not only to write your tests uh, but also to specify the types and let the other part of the compiler help help out right so uh you know you're, you don't rely too much on the type reconstruction which is type inference uh rely more on on types on the type checker instead so specify the types and let the compiler uh, help you out uh one last thing that you can do with um with the, with the four comprehensions is also you can have uh, sort of like valves inside of them for example over here in the middle of nowhere you can say that c should be i don't know b and then instead of that you can use it over here right just like one of the things that you should know you, you can you can figure out what it sugars to if you really really want to it, it basically just takes the c and puts that into the same um into the same closure where, where the map is and the last thing that I'm going to show you is that uh, four uh, comprehensions are used quite often with ranges. Uh, remember, we generated this um, uh, uh, chessboard in the in the video where we implemented a uh, flat map. So uh, ranges are it can be they can be treated as collections. So they have a flat map, right, where we have the character over here, and we have one to eight. Uh, we're going to have map. Or we have the number and let's produce a tuple over here let me scroll down a bit okay so uh, we have the tuple and we're gonna do for each magenta so this should be a chessboard right so we have a a times b a times and so on and so on and so on and um uh, obviously you can write this in a full comprehensions you just say okay just give me all the characters from i'm just gonna copy that from a to h and then give me the number from one to eight and yield cn and wrap the whole thing into braces for each yellow should be the same thing all right okay so we have our chessboard we have our chessboard now uh, don't worry about ranges too much uh, unless you're writing something really heavy computational. Uh, so the thing about ranges is that they sort of look like collections, but they actually don't store the entire range in them. They just uh, do some uh, relatively trivial calculations instead. So um, essentially, time essentially uh, it, it feel it, it feeds to the flat map um, the number plus one or the character plus one every time that it needs uh, it needs it. So it just does calculation instead of uh, actually storing uh, ranges. Okay, so we're basically done. I forgot one thing to, to, to show you one thing. Um, there's this uh, compiler plugin that uh, makes sure that in, in, in this case where we had the where we had the collect, uh, remember um, this one, for example, this one over here. Okay, so um, it, it, it threw out the none. In fact, maybe it's even better if you do it uh, with, a, with a tuple. Uh, let's do it with a tuple, hold up. Uh, let's go over here and let's say that we forgot to specify the type like this okay so um there, there is a way to uh to let it uh, let's also remove that thing okay like this uh, to let the compiler to generate um, map instead of collect uh, with, with a compiler plugin so this compiler plugin is over here i'm going to leave the link down in the description it's called better four and um basically it, it 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 generates um a bit more um a bit less surprising uh, implementations of the of the uh, of the four comprehensions and maybe maybe one day it will uh, also end up in the in the uh, next version of the of the scala compiler so we're going to use this plugin real quick so all we need to do uh, is copy that and go into our build and because we have this one already enabled we just do this we reload Oh, actually, it shows me 023. Hold up. Um, am I not on the latest branch? Hold up. Master. Yeah, let's take this one 030. Zero. Right, there we go. Over here. There we go. All right. Reload. Okay. So if you run now, it doesn't do anything. Why didn't it do anything? Oh, because I don't have the five. There we go. So uh, so now it produced 
it was supposed to produce a warning. All right, so um, it was supposed to produce a warning and throw an error, uh, but it just it just threw an error. Um, maybe it, it's going to produce a warning over there in this other one, um, this one over here. Let's see. Yeah, so uh, for this one, it says a warning. It, it's going to follow on the following input, right? So it's going to follow. Um, uh, follow. It's going to fail on the following input. It's going to fail on on none. Okay, so it's for you to decide if you want to use this or not. Um, and another thing that, that I want to show you is for uh, for the numbers. So if you're doing something, as I said, like the ranges there, they're you know they're efficient enough. Uh, but if you're doing something with with a really heavy computation, then check out the library called called Spire. Uh, so um, Spire is a numerical library for Scala, which is intended to be generic, fast, and precise. And among other things, it has a thing called C4. Not, in, not, not as in the explosive C4, uh, C4 is in the for loop from the language called C. So it sort of basically looks like, like this one and um, uh, it uses macros behind the scenes. So basically it generates an actual while loop. So it's uh, apparently it's, uh, faster. I haven't used, uh, I've never used it. I've never used Spire actually, um, but uh, I'm hearing from, from people that uh, they're actually happy, uh, happy with it. Okay, technically I know the maintainer of Spire and he's the one who's happy with it. Not the point though. <laughs> All right, and apparently, uh, if you're doing Scala.js, then apparently Scala.js is also generating loops uh, out of four comprehensions, uh, for for ranges, obviously, not 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 always, just for ranges. All right, so the last thing that we're gonna do is we're just gonna commit that. Um, I'm gonna go to homegrown, homegrown collections over here, and get status. Okay, so foldable and foldable factory exactly. So I'm gonna scroll down a little bit, and I'm gonna say get add everything get commit hyphen am I think it's video 18 and we're just gonna say um, uh, with filter yeah with filter enter get push my key my key again come on don't have long keys <laughs> all right so it's been pushed and um, yeah so um, I hope that I didn't make it sound like you should stop using four comprehensions right away. Uh, they're very, very useful. Uh, it just said sometimes uh, what they generate is not really straightforward. Just always remember that there is a cost. Uh, specify the types, uh, write unit tests in general, uh, write unit tests. And um, yeah, that's all I got for you today. I hope you liked this video. Like it if you did. Subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you. And most importantly, take care.